Please welcome founder of Hardware Club, Alexis Husu. Hey guys, can you, can you hear me? Cool. Um, so I'm actually going to talk about uh, venture capital today. And before I started, I wanted to kind of, uh, um, kind of a quick show of hands of um, who's running a company here. Yeah, so quite a lot of people. Who's raised venture capital before? It's in one end, I think, <laughs> over there. Welcome. Two, Angel. Angel, OK. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I guess this talk, um, and, and first I also want to thank uh, the core 77 people for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here today and to be able to talk about uh, what we do at Hardware Club and to, to, to run you through some of the things that uh, we, we've seen in the past and some of the notions that might be helpful for you guys if you, if you think about raising um, in the future. Um, so first, uh, to introduce myself briefly, um, my name is Alex Yusu. Um, I'm actually, I live in Paris. Uh, flew here yesterday. I'm still a bit jet lagged. Um, I'm the founder and president of a company called Hardware Club. Uh, that's a venture capital fund. I'll come back to uh, what a venture capital fund uh, is and, and what we do. And I'm on the board of a, of a few companies. Um, so, um, we started Hardware Club um, as a community-based venture firm dedicated to hardware companies. So, this uh, might be um, uh, a strange uh, a mix of words, community, venture, uh, hardware. Um, but so, what we tried to do a few years back, so I was actually investing in companies um, along with my co-founder back then, and we realized that hardware companies, so companies actually making products, um, usually um, including electronics, had the same issues, which were um, actually some that Jamie talked about, about dealing with factories, dealing with uh, distribution afterwards, etc. And so we felt uh, there was a need to create a platform, there was a need to create a place where basically those companies could get funded. Um, and the way we wanted to do this is not just, uh, we didn't just want to write checks to companies, we wanted to be able to provide support and value to them. And so what we did uh, in order to do that is we created a community uh, that now gathers a bit more than 450 companies. Um, in 30 countries, uh, which is a lot of countries. Um, and so this community uh, is basically kind of a non-profit, uh, meaning that it's free of charge, but so we, we companies apply, they get selected. We only accept a small portion of the companies that apply. Uh, but when they join and when they get accepted, they get accesses, access to resources on, on, on what we think uh, is hard to, um, to, to achieve when you're a hardware startup. So manufacturing, distribution, corporate partnerships. Um, and so on top of that, and that's kind of the originality of our model, we've built a venture fund. So we've built a fund that's $50 million now, and that invests in those companies, not all of them. Uh, investing in 450 companies would be a lot. So we've, we've made 26 investments so far um, across Europe and the US. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I guess that's kind of a, um, a quick picture of Hardware Club, and we have offices in cool cities like Paris, Tokyo, and San Francisco. Uh, not yet New York, but uh, I'm working on it. Um, so the idea here of, that, of this talk was to, um, and I think that's one of the discussions I had early on with the people at Core 77, which were, okay, there's going to be a lot of designers in the room. Um, uh, not many of them have raised money in the past. Um, how can we um, explain or how can we describe what venture capital is on one side, but also more broadly, how, uh, uh, what are the options when, it, when, it, when, when someone wants to fund a project, uh, especially a designer? Well, the first thing, and it's pretty basic, uh, but I, wanted, I like to start with basic things, uh, is that there's two ways, right? So there's definitely um, fundraising and going to VCs or angels or other type of investors. Uh, but potentially, there's one way that actually, actually I think a lot of you guys from the show events that, um, that we pre previously went through uh, know, uh, which is bootstrapping, right? And what, what bootstrapping means? It means using your own money to build a product or build a service. And, and sell this product or service and make money out of it and reinvest that money to build a product, to build a company and to build more products. Um, this is something that, that um, actually a lot of uh, companies started by designers do. We've seen, we actually see a lot of them. Um, and, and I feel that it's, it's actually uh, something that's worth um, uh, looking at when starting a project. Uh, just because I think there's two ways. Um, 
there's, um, and I'll come back to that, venture capital is, is, comes with certain strings, comes with certain constraints, um, and you might just want to start a company that's sustainable, profitable, uh, where you have total freedom of uh, what you can do in the company and where you can grow at your own pace. Um, and so that's some of the advantages of starting a company that's not funded by a VC is that you can do whatever you want. It's your business. You can grow your, at your own pace. And actually, it might be hard for you to invest too much money in the company just because you don't have money. Uh, so you're going to need to sell products. Uh, and you're going to need to be profitable from day one, um, which um, is, is great, but it also kind of limits your growth potential. Because even if you get traction for your product, if you, even if you get traction for, your, uh, for the business or the service you're trying to sell, you're going to have to be conscious of the resources and, the, and, and typically uh, the working capital that you put at work. So, um, meaning that if you have a lot of products to sell, you're going to make, make sure that you can actually deliver those products. And the liabilities that come with uh, being a big business, for example, um, um, you're going to have to be very conscious about that. Um, so the other way, um, and I think that's that's why um, I'm, I'm here to talk about uh, mostly, but it's basically fundraising, right? And so first I wanted to kind of have a quick map of the several options, because when we talk about venture capital, uh, there's many different things that are involved. Um, and typically, depending on the stage where the company is at, um, there's, there's definitely very different kind of players. Um, so the first thing people do when they start a company, and I did the same when, I, when we started Hardware Club, actually, is go to friends and family and ask them for money, right? Um, some people say friends, family, and fools. Um, people that are actually uh, able to fund your product or your company before uh, you have anything, when it's only uh, a few slides on a the deck. Um, then, quite often, when you get a bit of money, uh, so you're able to work on a first prototype, which is usually the, what people do with the, the, the first money they get uh, when they start a hardware startup, then at some point you're going to get a first working prototype. And at this point, um, there are several options. So the, 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 the extension of the friends and family circle usually leads you to angels. So people uh, with a little more money, people that may be in your network or maybe outside of the network, uh, typically um, in entrepreneurs that have sold their previous company, um, rich people you might know, um, and so the idea here is that uh, being able to show this prototype and be able to kind of gather excitement about, uh, around it and a bit of money, hopefully. Uh, then a few other options, uh, accelerators, obviously. So I think uh, one, of, one of them is actually host, hosted here. Um, um, and so it's, it's a great option for people that are starting a company, that want to build a team and don't necessarily have business expertise or, or are first-time entrepreneurs, because accelerators are going to help you structure your business, are going to help you um, put things in a certain way, and, uh, and also help you raise money, help you um, um, write your first deck, um, learn how to pitch your company, many of those things that I'm actually talking about an accelerator will do. Um, then come seed funds, seed VCs. Um, so typically funds like us. Um, and maybe one of the, the, the things I can talk about is the difference between seed VCs and series A VCs. Um, so we're typically a seed fund, which means that when we invest money in a company, there's typically not so much, there's not an, an actual business. It's more about people um, with an idea that potentially want to build a company. And so what we're, our money or the, the, what we want to do with those companies is just not, is fund them, but also bring resources and help them grow. Um, we're not necessarily looking at traction or numbers. We're looking really at the people and the potential of the business. Um, and so we're going to be very involved in the company, meaning that quite often we're going to talk to founders on a daily basis, on a weekly basis about their business. Um, Series A VCs, which are late, slightly later stage, so we write checks of about half a million quite often. Uh, a Series A VC might uh, write checks of about two or three million, uh, or even more. Um, and so what they're going to try to do is to uh, inject more money in the company and provide, provide more, uh, sometimes, uh, um, high profile um, support on high profile hires um, and help you scale, which is a step, uh, um, a step later than, than, than where we typically uh, get involved with. Um, then there's a few other players. So banks tend to not fund companies so early. So that's why I put them uh, on the very uh, end of that slide. Um, growth funds, edge funds, etc. Um, so one of the questions uh, I think that, um, that yeah, I think many people should, should ask themselves actually sometimes before coming to us is uh, why raise from a VC? 
Um, I think one of the key things, and, and especially we were talking about like the different, we were talking about angels earlier, and so one of the things we do when we invest in a company is that we want to really want to support them. So we're really going to be part of the team afterwards, or we want to be seen as, uh, as, um, as being on board with them. Um, and so we're going to usually write a first check, but quite often we're going to reserve money for later on. Rounds. So it's very, in most cases, I would say, most often, we write a first check, and then a few months later when the company needs more money, or if, they, if they're not at a stage where they can raise more money from other people, then they come back to us, and quite often, if we like what the company's done, and if we like their progress, we're going to write them another check so that they can, what we typically call a bridge, so that they can get to the next stage. Um, the other thing, the second thing we want to do when we invest in a company is add value to the business. Uh, in our case, it means that since we've built what I talked a, a bit about earlier, this community, these resources, we're able to provide um, access to uh, manufacturers, for example. So we meet a company that, that has an interesting product idea, and, but they don't know where to manufacture it. We're going to be able to kind of bring those contacts. Um, and the last thing is get ready for scale. So again, that's the same idea as, uh, that I was saying, um, what I was describing earlier about bootstrapping is that uh, VC uh, comes with strings, but it also enables you to move faster and, and probably further in terms of what you can do. So, and, and so one of the, 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 the things um, I was trying, I'm, I'm going to try to explain here is why we write, why we get excited about companies and why we write checks in companies. Um, I think there, there's typically, for me at least, there's three things that get me excited about a company. Uh, the first one, and that's the first things I look at, and that's the, the one thing that really kind of is, is the most important for me, is the team. So when I'm looking at the company, I'm really investing in people because I'm investing early, so I really want to make sure that those people um, know what they're going to do and, and that they are the best people to execute on the idea uh, that they have. And so typically, we're looking at a, at a team of two to three founders that have uh, different backgrounds, that know each other for a while, ideally, and that have previous experience uh, in the field. Not necessarily building the company, uh, building a company in the space, but uh, sometimes just having worked in a bigger company or um, having, having, having consulted for, for a company that's big in the space. Um, so then we look at the product, right? So quite often our, at, our, at our stage, it looks, it looks more like a prototype. So it's something that people want to make, uh, but that's not a full product yet. And so one of the things we encourage people to do, and I think I would encourage uh, any of you guys that want to start a company tomorrow, and that is the first product, first prototype, is to put in, in the hands of, of the users as early as possible, just to get some feedback and be able to build a product with, the, with them. So iterate on the prototypes, be able to, to make something that people are really going to get, be excited about and that they're going to love. Uh, you'd rather start with a product that you've, 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 had, um, um, you've put in the hands of people and, and you really want to make sure that even if your audience is pretty niche when you start, that the people that you made the product for are really excited about it. Um, then I told you there was the market, um, but I'm, 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 there's only seven minutes late, so I'm going to, uh, to I'm, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to talk about the market with this one. Uh, so this is an example of a company that we, we've invested in. Um, so I met those guys 18 months ago. Um, they came to me after their previous company failed, uh, and it was a pretty hard kind of a, Lending uh, because they were they, they so basically they started a kind of a European version of uh, Seamless that got quite a lot of traction in Europe um, across France across Belgium and a few other countries. They were doing 60 million dollars in, in annual run rate, but then uh, they ran out of cash and they had to stop the company from from. Um, overnight, uh, which led a lot of people, especially some of the riders that were using the service, um, without a paycheck, which was which was quite bad. Um, and so I met those guys a few months later, and they told me, "Okay, we want to start a new company. Um, we feel like we want to. We've learned from what we've done in the past, from from the, from that failure, and now we want to start something that's with a different model. We want to make something. We want to make a product. We want to." We want to try to, 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 to build a category-defining product. And they were really exciting because they, they were running a, a delivery service in the past about the prospect of uh, uh, e-bikes, which uh, they thought was the fastest uh, way to move around cities, especially dense cities like we have in Europe. And so they had this, this idea of a product. They didn't have the product yet, so it was really much of a uh, pitch on a deck, I'd say. Um, the market was 
and it's still pretty small, but it's growing fast. And so one of the things that, um, it, there was a lot of debates internally in our, so the way VCs work is that there are several people that uh, get around the table and make a decision at some point. And so I was really excited about it. Some of my partners were slightly more skeptical on the fact that uh, the product was not uh, existing yet. Um, and so I think the key thing uh, that this illustrates is that the team is key at some point. I think one of the things that uh, we really invested in early on was, was, was in the people and, and in the fact that those guys uh, had proved through previous companies that they were able to scale companies fast. Um, and, and we were really excited about giving them the opportunity to, to, to try a new venture and to be able to, uh, um, to take on a market that we felt, we felt was quite exciting. Uh, what, so what is a perfect team? I talked a, a bit about the team. So that's a very simplistic version of it, obviously. Um, I think what I, what I was trying to illustrate here is the fact that um, one of the main mistakes that people do when they start a company is try to just go with the, to their friends and say, hey, uh, do you want to start a company with me? So they end up with a with a team that's pretty much the same profile. So three designers, three business people, three uh, developers. And I'm, um, some people, and especially in Silicon Valley, sometimes think that you know, a team ju just just get rid of other people, just, just, just developers is, is, is fine. I think that uh, having the right mix of, um, of um, in terms of the founding team, having the right mix of people uh, being to bring um, different expertise and different experiences um, makes the whole kind of team from our perspective um, much more um, interesting. Um, and also if we see that there's everything in the team, like they have the core competencies, um, and the people that own the business have those, um, then we feel much more reassured that they'll be able to, uh, um, to move to the next step. Because sometimes you're gonna invest in a business guy and he's gonna, just gonna say, oh, you know, but the design part or the marketing part, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, because, you know, we as humans tend to think that what other people do uh, is simple and that what we do is, is hard. So I think that's one um, thing that I was trying to illustrate here, the fact that you want to create this interdisciplinary team uh, when you start. Um, yeah, just wanted to quickly talk about the VC strategy, I think, because I think that's one thing that also some people sometimes reaching out to us don't necessarily understand is that, so one, we're not investing our money. So because when I'm, every time I'm talking about a 50 million fund, people are like, oh, how did you get that money? I was like, it's not mine. I raised it. Uh, so what we do is we raise money and we do that actually I'd say sometimes about 50% of our time. Uh, we raise money from bigger institutions, from pension funds, from, from, from rich people as well. Um, and we invest that money in companies. So we sell them a strategy, we say, okay, we're gonna invest in 25 companies that do hardware in this geography and this geography that we think that we invest at this stage, this amount, and we think we can, we can return your money and, and, and make a decent uh, um, um, final profit for you. Uh, but so typically, what, what does a, a VC strategy look like? So you, and again, this is kind of, a, um, you know, this is one example, there's, there's many different versions obviously, but so we at least uh, are going to invest with our current fund in 25 to 40 companies. So we've already invested in 60, 26 companies, so I think we'll probably go a little higher, but um, in those companies, and do, we've, when we start, we've created this model where we said, okay, this is what uh, our returns are gonna look like, and we expect one to three companies, so only a small portion of those companies to return 90% of the, of, the, of the final proceeds that we'll send to our investors. It means that every in company we meet, every company that we, um, we that pitched us, um, we really, like, can this company um, return a, our entire fund? Can this company be a 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 million dollar exit? Um, which means that there needs to be a huge multiple on the money we initially invest, especially because we invest early on. And so what it means is that hyper growth is a necessity here and that you um, need to, to take into account, and I think that pitching this is you need to take into account the fact that um, we don't necessarily, and I'm, I have to be honest on that, on that, on that side, but we don't necessarily care about uh, a company dying. We care, uh, we don't want companies to, 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 to we don't want to build small, profitable and sustainable business, which is uh, terrible sometimes. Um, we want to build uh, very big companies. And, and we'd rather have a company, um, we'd rather have one or two companies succeed, succeed massively than just having a, a bunch of our companies do okay. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind whenever you're pitching a, a VC, and that's also one thing to keep in mind whenever you're building a company early on to know what kind of uh, model you wanna go after in terms of funding. 
Um, yeah, quite um, very quickly, but so I, I was looking at the, the numbers, but so I think last year I, I looked probably at about 1,500 companies um, across US and Europe mostly. Uh, I've met about 150 companies, which in the end is about three or four companies per, per week. Um, and I invested in six, I think, um, which is basically yeah, kind of an average between three to 10. It means that the company I ended up invested in were um, companies I fell in love with. So it's a, a very, very small portion of the, the companies I met. So I, I ended up saying no to a very, very, very large portion of the companies I met, 99.9% .9 of the companies uh, uh, we met, which is not easy sometimes. It's one of the hard part of the, of the job because we meet exciting companies, but sometimes it's just not, not just a good fit. Um, it's also very hard to be on the other side of the no, obviously, um, especially when you're trying to get funding. Um, but just yeah, kind of to try to, to, to explain what, uh, what kind of our daily uh, routine is about. Um, so what is a good pitch? Um, it's a few things. Um, on my side, the way I like, you know, founders to articulate things is, you know, is, is basically four things. So the first one is vision. Uh, you typically have an original instinct or intuition about a product that can disrupt the market. Uh, so one of the things that we, uh, that is quite powerful is if you're able to describe um, in, a, in a very efficient manner how you can turn this initial intuition into a billion dollar uh, opportunity, into a very big opportunity that can become typically a publicly traded company. Um, again, I talked a bit about the team, so I'm not going to come back on that, but so the product. Um, it's really about showing that people love the product, not, not, not like or not, are not just okay with the product, or, uh, but that you uh, solve a pain that's, that's so uh, strong that people um, need your product and that you can't take the product away from them. Um, and ob obviously the last part is the market, right? So sometimes we meet interesting companies, so I've met a company that was um, doing a, something very interesting a couple, a couple days ago, but in the end we realized that the market was only uh, a few hundred millions, uh, which might sound big already, but for us, given the size of the, of, of the money we need to return to our investors, it's not big enough. Um, we typically want them, we, we want the company we invest in to be able to be a big company while having a small market share, uh, while having a small part of the, of the pie of the, uh, in the market they are in. And so in order to do that, you need to have a giant kind of market originally. Um, yeah, just wanted to say a few words, uh, and I know I'm late already, so about crowdfunding, um, which um, actually a few years back when we, when we started doing content around hardware, I think we, 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 we did a few presentations about crowdfunding, how to raise money on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, etc. Um, I think crowdfunding is a great tool and it really helps um, our uh, ecosystem. A lot of the hardware companies have been able to start because of, of, of crowdfunding, so I think it's a great tool for several reasons. First, it's a great way to provide uh, an idea of uh, product market fit. I think test might be a bit strong. Um, validate pricing, so be able to say, okay, I have this product, I think at this price, um, I, I can probably sell it to people and, and kind of get a validation on that. And so, and also build an initial community, which sometimes can be a double sword thing, as, uh, as we've seen in a few examples. Uh, but it also comes with a few um, 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 dangers, I would say. The first one is we've seen a lot of companies uh, raise money or, or uh, launch pre-orders uh, before they were actually ready. Uh, so just putting a few 3D renders on the internet, getting a few millions, and then, oh, uh, shit, what do we do now? Uh, you want to launch when you're ready. We've seen um, it might be um, tempting to launch very fast and to, tr and to try to gather as, many, as much money as you can. It's very uh, potentially um, uh, dangerous uh, long term for the company and um, I don't have so much time so I'm going to move to the next one. Um, you also want to make sure that you take as many orders as you can handle. It doesn't mean that taking a lot, it means taking a little and what I said to companies today is mostly uh, try to launch small and to launch fast. So be able to ship products fast um, and, and, and not take as many orders as you can. Um, and also don't overpromise. Um, so that's one thing that, that's, um, that's killed a lot of companies that started uh, crowdfunding campaigns in the past. Um, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to do what, you, what you're selling to customers and this will come back if you can't, um, a way or another. 
in terms of killing the brand. All right, uh, thank you I, for all of you guys that wouldn't be interested in actually uh, starting a company but joining one. We have a lot of exciting companies that, uh, that I'd love to tell you about. I'll be around uh, uh, today, um, so feel free to, to come to me. Thanks. Thank you.